So with the 2022-23 season for Bradford City now officially over, this morning the club released the official retain list for the end of the campaign. I obviously brought you guys my retain list on Monday. Bradford City have now brought out the actual one and it's fair to say there's a couple of decisions that I certainly don't agree with. We are going to be discussing everything like that in today's video. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel it 100 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are down the road 7,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the youtube algorithm let me know your thoughts are you happy with the retain list are you happy to see some players get new deals or are you happy to see some players released and all that sort of stuff now there is certainly some interesting decisions in there, some that I certainly do disagree with. Now, if everyone apart from Andy Cook was released, I would not really have had any complaints with that. I think in total, there's three first-team players who've been offered new contracts, and then you've also got some of the players who've recently been in the academy and are just making their way, really, into life in first-team football. So we're going to read through the Bradford City article, then we'll go through each player individually, see what's next, maybe, for them in this upcoming campaign. So make sure to drop a like on there for me, subscribe if you're new as well. Let's get into it. So Bradford City tweet at 8.59 this morning say we can today confirm our 2022 slash 23 retain list and release list ahead of next season. The article does then read retain list 2022 slash 23. The following players have been offered new terms with the club. Alex Gilead, Andy Cook, Bobby Poynton, Dylan Yumbe, Harvey Rowe, Heath Richardson and Liam Rydaug. The following players have not been offered new contracts ahead of the 23-24 campaign and we will be released. Aboisa, Adam Clayton, Charlie Wood, Cole Roberts, Jack Wilson, Kean Skills, Oscar Threlkeld and Jan Songo. And the following players remain under contract for the 23-24 season. Brad Halliday, Kieran Kelly, Colin Doyle, Emmanuel Sadibe, Finn Cousin Dawson, Harry Chapman, Harry Lewis, Jake Young, Jamie Walker, Luke Hendry, Matt Derbyshire, Matty Folds, Matty Platt, Richie Smallwood, Ryan East, Sam Subs, it's Timmy Odessina and Verden Oliver. The club have exercised an option to extend Colin Doyle's playing contract by a further year. He will also remain as City's goalkeeping coach. Meanwhile, Dara Costello, Dion Pereira, Romney Critchlow, Scott Banks, Thierry Nevers, and Talaji Bola all depart following expiry of their loan agreements with the Bantams. The, cl the club would like to take this opportunity to thank all departing players for their efforts while at Bradford City AFC and wish them the very best for the future. Now, there's not been, as of right now at the time of recording, just after two o'clock, there's been no extra post after that wishing players individually good luck because we saw last season there were a few players who got individual tweets and Instagram posts on social media thanking them for their services this year we've not had a single player get a thank you I mean even Gareth Evans got one last year so to say people like Jan Songo he was brilliant for his last season Adam Clayton had a steady end to the campaign I was surprised not really to see either of them or maybe even just all the academy players in one post as well I did think that was a little bit interesting because probably the emotions are so raw from the you know, it's not even a week on since our playoff semi final defeat against Carlisle. Probably that is the reason why. But we'll start out then with the players who have been released by the football club. I'll quickly give you guys my thoughts on them. Aboisa is the first name on this list, and I think this is one that we all saw coming. He needs a fresh start, one that I personally wanted to be released as well. He's just never fit. He's had major hamstring problems throughout his whole career with Bradford City. I personally feel like that was Derek Adams' fault. You know, his training regimes really did kill his body, and he needs a fresh start. Go somewhere else he probably will get another league two club somewhere like a Tranmere, a Walsall, a Doncaster might take a punt on him on a one or two year contract but because of his in injury problems I do think he will struggle a little bit to be fair to maybe find an elite club in the AFL certainly in the lower levels of that and he just needs to go somewhere and get playing games again whether he's has a, a season like what he did in his last season with Scunthorpe or not he just needs to be playing football week in week out when he was fit he didn't really look up to standard, to be fair, and it's just not a move that has really worked out. All the promise in the world, but that one did not work out, and I wish Aboisa all the very best when he is released at the end of his contract. Next up is Adam Clayton. Came in in January on a free transfer from Doncaster Rovers and initially steadied the ship, but we've seen over the last month or two, his legs are really going now, and we don't need another defensive slow midfielder we need someone with a bit of fresh legs and a bit of energy in that midfield and I think it was the right decision to release Adam Clayton brings the average age of the squad down a little bit as well obviously we will need to replace him with a little bit more of an energetic midfielder but there's no doubt that he's got quality on the ball and he might get another league two club if not potentially drops to someone like a Chesterfield in the National League potentially I'm not really too sure but thank you for your services Adam Clayton and I wish him all the best for the future the next couple were players who didn't really feature too much in the first team they were just coming through 
recruit from the academy. Charlie would surprise me a little bit. You know, he was meant to be one of the next big things coming out of the academy. This season has had a couple loan spells. Hasn't really worked out for him. And I actually thought he would have got a new contract, to be fair. You know, I don't think he did too bad at Geisy, but clearly the club don't think that he's developed enough in this last year and he's not been offered a new contract. And it's probably for the sake of his own career, really go out and play some regular football, even if it is in non league. Next up is Cole Roberts. This one again surprised me a little bit. He struggled for minutes in professional, not professional football, but first team men's football. But in the academy, he scored loads of goals. And I thought he would have got another year, but clearly, again, the club don't think he's good enough to deserve another year and has been released at the end of his current contract. Jack Wilson spent a little bit of the season out alone at Brighouse and Osset United and he did okay there but I think what are they tier 8 something like that like he was so far below playing at first team level that it just does kind of make sense for him I think what is he 19 20 now he's never really going to be developing enough in the next couple of years to warrant a new contract to get into that first team and wish him all the best and everything but I don't think he will be playing professional football in his career which is a shame for some of these young lads because I'm sure they all did really well last season in our brilliant under 19s campaign but there's a massive step up between academy football and first team football and yeah wish him all the best. Kean Skills is a bit of a disappointing one to me to be honest with you know he was was one of a couple of players who didn't get offered long-term contracts in that COVID season where some players did Kean Skittles only got a two year, whereas Finkels and Dawson got what he get a three and a half, four year contract at the time, which I thought was crazy to be honest with you. Kean Skittles, I thought looked good in pre season, has been loaded out to Farsi Celtic and done well to be fair there. But clearly, again, Mark Hughes thinks that money could be spent a little bit better in other places and has decided to move him on at the end of his current contract. Wish him all the best. I think out of all the youngsters who've been released recently, obviously he's a couple of years older than the other ones, so it's a bit easier for me to say, but I think he's the most likely to make it as a professional. Whether that's still in non league, in the National League I think he could get a club there somewhere maybe like a Halifax as a fringe player I'm not really too sure but clearly Mark Hughes has decided that he's not good enough to be playing for Bradford City and I wish him all the very best next up is Oscar Threlkeld I mean this is one is just another one that simply did not work out under Derek Adams in pre-season last year looked really really good then for the rest of that campaign just absolutely shocking really really poor standard and this season was loaned out to Oldham for the first half of the campaign got an injury came back and he's not even featured once so yeah all the best for, to him to move it on you know, thank you for his efforts but he was just nowhere near the standard to play for Bradford City nowhere near good enough I think he'll struggle to get an EFL move next season I will be interested to see where he does end up he might end up somewhere like a, a York potentially that's a, just a bit of a rogue shout but yeah Oscar Threlkeld nowhere near good enough to play for Bradford City and it's probably for the best that he has moved on and the final player the one that hurts the most probably this year is Jan Songer was brilliant for his last season this season struggled for minutes was loaned out to Walsall in January again struggled for minutes there and yeah it's a shame to see him go but it is for the best he's not good enough to play in a Mark Hughes system and while he always gives you 110% wherever he goes I'm sure again he'll be loved by the fans but I can't see him really going to a team who are challenging for promotion I think he'll probably get a mid-table League 2 club next season if Morecambe saw out their transfer embargo situation I could potentially see him linking back up once again with Derek Adams but probably for the best that Jan Sungo is moved on and I wish him all the very best. Moving in then into the players who have been offered new contracts by the football club. We'll start out then with Colin Doyle because the club have exercised an option to extend his playing contract by a further year and he will obviously remain as Bradford City's goalkeeping coach. Now this one is an interesting one for me. You know, I don't actually think when he signed, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I don't remember him having the option to extend in his contract by a further playing year. But I think it clearly proves that Harry Lewis might be staying. I don't know, maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into that, but I feel like if you were getting another goalkeeper and you don't really know what their standard is, you wouldn't want a goalkeeper coach who's pushing 40 years of age, who's not really going to be playing first team football next season he's just there as an option so we don't really have to spend money on a second choice goalkeeper it makes sense from that point of view you know saving wage budget in one area to spend it in another area but overall I don't mind it I just think maybe Lewis could do with an actual second choice just to push him that little bit because like what I mentioned in my return list on Monday we have seen the odd mistake creep into Lewis's game over the last couple of weeks and months but overall this season Lewis has been outstanding and obviously and clearly Colin Doyle is doing a good job as goalkeeper coach because I think Lewis has also developed over the year as well. In terms of the players who have actually been offered new contracts with the football club now when they sign them I'm going to do a video for all of them individually I'm not sure what I'm going to do for some of the more younger players like Point and Yumby, Rowan Richards 
Richardson because while they are first team players, I haven't seen enough of them really to make a full video on. So I might make a video on all of them together rather than individually. But starting out with Alex Gilead, I don't hate the fact he's been offered a new deal if it's only maybe a one year deal and potentially the option of a further year. I think he needs to be on reduced wages because I think his involvement next season in the first team can't, obviously in the first team, can't be as much as what it was this season. He doesn't offer enough goal for it and I think he'll be a good player to bring on off the bench for the last 15-20 minutes to see a game out, brings good energy and all that sort of stuff. Fairly versatile, can play centre mid, could do a job on the wing, even a job as a 10 if you really need him to, can play right back, could probably even do a job at left back to be fair, you know, he is Mr Versatile and I don't hate the idea of him getting a new contract, I think personally he should have been released because he probably is on big wages, you know, came in as a marquee signing last season uh, from Scunthorpe United and struggled really over the last two years for goal contribution I think he got one or two goals last year got one goal and two assists this year it's just not enough from a midfielder and like what I say I don't hate the fact he's got a new contract but I don't think he can be a starter next season in my opinion next up on the list is Andy Cook obviously he had to be offered a new contract with the football club scored 31 goals that man has to stay we have to really be pretty much doing whatever we can to keep hold of him because he's our only real goal threat who is currently in the side we need to give him as much service next season if you give him a half a chance in the penalty area in League 2 that man will take it fingers crossed you know he does actually sign a new contract and fingers crossed we haven't disrespected him with that contract offer you know I'll be interested to see maybe if he does sign how many years will that be I anticipate I think a two years with the option of a further year if he, he scores so many goals say in his final year I think that could maybe potentially be a good idea but for me personally obviously the right decision to try and retain Andy Cook and now I guess the ball is in his court on where we go from that one next up is a couple of the academy players starting out with Bobby Point and I I think he was the captain for the under 19s or he certainly was when I went to watch them play this season in a pre-season friendly against Eccles Hill looks like a player who could certainly make it in the first team you know has had a couple loan spells as well this season I can't remember who he's playing with before Sparsley Celtic but whoever it was he was doing really well there and fingers crossed again we see him involved a little bit more in the first team this season he had the odd appearance as well in pre-season I think he came on against Sunderland maybe or it might have been Derby I'm not really too sure but I remember him playing in pre-season he looked pretty good so happy to see him be offered another contract. Dylan Yumby as well scored loads of goals for the under-19s last season. Had a couple loan spells this season and didn't really get too much game time but travelled with the first team squad as well against Newport and he looks like again a bit similar to Point and one who could certainly make it as a professional in the upcoming season so I'll be interested to see how he does develop over the next couple of years. Harvey Rose had his injury problems over the last couple of seasons but I think he's the actual captain for the under-19s and then Bobby Poynton's vice captain. I'm not really too sure. I might have got it wrong. I've just seen so many different pictures of them all with the captain's armband on but I think Harvey Rocker is a right back but can play centre back I might have got that wrong I haven't seen him play at all in a Bradford City shirt ever so I can't really comment on him this is one that I'll just have to trust Mike Hughes and maybe even the academy managers as well to have got the right decision on with this one Heath Richardson is the final academy player you know that you could call it someone who's come through our academy and he travelled with the first team squad pretty much all season this year was a third choice goalkeeper and I think that's a good thing to have an academy keeper as your third choice probably not on the most expensive of wages and again provides a bit of competition if you absolutely need him to I think in the warm-ups and stuff obviously he's not playing at 200 million percent but he's looked good you know he's made some good saves in that and that's the only real thing that I can judge him off because I've not seen him play at a first team game yet but for me personally I don't hate the fact he's been offered a new contract whatsoever and the final player who has been offered a new contract with the football club is Liam Rydog now if you've watched any of my match day vlogs from this season you'll know I'm not a fan of Rydog at all I don't think he's good enough to be playing for Bradford City and the the fact he has been offered a new contract is a little bit of a concern to me, to be honest with you. I just don't think he's good enough defensively. He gets skinned far too easily. Offensively, Paul not got the pace. I think as a backup, maybe on a one-year deal on reduced wages, I can potentially get on board with that, but anything more than that, and I can't. He should definitely not be a starter next season. I think that pretty much all but confirms Matty Folds' departure as well in the summer. I think he'll probably go back to Harrogate. Obviously, he's still contract with Withers, but I think if Rydalg stays... Neither of them two are good enough to be playing as a first choice left back. They're not good enough going forward. They're not quick enough. They're not good enough offensively. And neither of them are particularly strong defensively. And I would personally like to see us bring in a new left back in this upcoming transfer window. Now, we've been linked with the Barrow left back, Patrick Burrow. Barrow? Burrow? Something like that. Patrick Burrow. I'm not really too sure. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But I think he's 27 years of age. Looks like a pretty decent player. But I think if Rydalg does sign the new contract and we bring a new left back in, I don't see a world in where Matty Folds does stay with the football club, which is a little bit of a shame but like what I say Rydalg 
if it's a one-year deal on reduced wages as a backup, I don't hate it, but he cannot be a starter next season, obviously. That's what I mentioned. All the players who are under contract for next season will obviously be currently still with the football club, and I'll be interested to see what happens with any of the loan players who have obviously now departed the club. Critchlow were already released by Huddersfield Bank, start of a contract with Crystal Palace. So I'll have to wait and see whenever contracts uh, extensions are announced or new signings. I'll get the video out as soon as possible, my reaction to it, and all that sort of stuff. But I am going to leave it there for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join it 100 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road, 7,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on Bradford City's return list, which players you're happy to see leave and also have their contract contracts extended with by the football club thank you very much for watching today's video have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all very soon for another one peace